people I work a lot with are archaeologists. That's a very different background to me. It tends to be not much technology there, or if it is, it hasn't changed for a long time. We'd get together, they'd tell me the story, the message they want to get across to the public, something maybe they're having trouble conveying at the moment. I'd try and fit several technologies to that, so I'd suggest several things that might help them reach a different audience or reach one of their existing audiences in a different way. And we'd come up with a few different prototypes and we test it together. We'd probably get some focus groups together, some people they know, some people I know, and we'd evaluate it. I'd do it from a technological point of view, some from a pragmatic, could this be deployed at scale in the wild? And they'd tell me whether it's conveying the message in the way they want to, and we try and work that out together. So it's a learning experience for both of us. What always surprises me is how willing people are to use technology. Um, we come from, a, I guess, a discipline where we think that Technology is above a lot of people, and it's, uh, I've found it quite the opposite, as long as you can talk to people about it in the correct way. i not blowing my own trumpet, I really enjoy talking to people about technology, and I, uh, I think I can talk to people on their level. That's one of the things I enjoy doing, is trying to pitch technology at a level that's suitable for the audience. Um, and I find it's quite easy to do with other academic disciplines. They're all intelligent people. It's about choosing the right words, and people tend to be really excited about the technology when you can give them a balanced view, when you can tell them the strengths and weaknesses and allow them to make a choice rather than forcing one thing on them. The drawback is probably the flip side of what I've just said. It's about managing expectations. So again, that's something I think I'm, I'm getting better at doing, but sometimes you can over-enthuse people. They can, they can jump on all the benefits that technology might bring and maybe ignore some of the practicalities of using technology, particularly the sorts of, not quite cutting edge, but, but new technologies that, that we tend to use. They're not usually ready for big rollouts, for big high profile events, because they still have teething problems, they have rough edges. So it's really about managing expectations for people that are not familiar with the technology. I tend to avoid jargon anyway as a matter of course when I'm talking to people that are not of the same discipline. Um, with the caveat that if you don't use the jargon, in some cases they'll, they'll be surprised when that jargon comes along later on. So it's, like I said, it's a learning experience. Um, but I try and avoid it, I try and explain it, I try and bring it down to people's levels so they understand why the jargon's there and who might use it with them. I mean, a lot of the people I work with are actually not academics, they're businesses and enthusiast groups who are maybe looking to invest in technology in the future and they engage us to help them through the first steps to try and understand what's out there. So I feel like I'm essentially equipping them to maybe go on and buy technology later or start to talk to people who might try and sell them technology later. So I try and avoid jargon as much as possible, but it's a really important part of equipping them to talk about it later. People who particularly haven't worked in interdisciplinary projects before maybe speak in jargon without really thinking that other people might not understand it. So you find people who are really entrenched in their discipline who use phrases, words that they would use with their colleagues every day without thinking, but then don't even think that you might not have a clue what they're talking about. I mean, I often find myself Googling things in, in project meetings and things. So sometimes don't want to help yourself as the only person who doesn't know that phrase in the room and you're Googling on the slide. But you find that people, especially academics, really want to tell you what these things mean. They love to talk about it. So it's usually not a problem. I just say talk to a lot of people, don't be afraid of asking questions, don't be afraid of giving opinions. Um, I, I really enjoy the position I tend to put myself in, which is as a translator in interdisciplinary projects. I think I mean, that's what I tend to think of myself more as now, and what, that's the role I seem to find myself adopting. As someone who understands technology, lots of people want to use technology, but you can't do that without speaking other people's languages. And I really enjoy that, and I think if, if you have a, an inquisitive mind, it's a really good position to be in because you get to learn a lot. You become a jack of all trades, which some people don't like. I really do like. I mean, that, that's probably the advantages and drawbacks rolled up in a phrase, I would say.